Great tree frog is one of my favorite species. It is appealing in that it can twist its neck and that way it looks a little more animated than most of the other frogs as it can look you in the eye or it can search for prey by twisting its neck around and searching for its prey as it feeds in trees. It's a medium-sized frog that's very toad-like. It has kind of bumpy skin and some people have referred to it as tree toad but it's not really a toad. It has a pattern that hides it very well as it travels on rocks and trees. It's called a lichenate pattern. It's a pattern that looks like lichen. You can see the adhesive discs on its toes and the lack of dorsal lateral ridges. Its color varies tremendously, which explains its Latin name, Hyla versicolor. It might be white or gray or green in background color, but usually you can see some evidence of that lichenate pattern. The gray tree frog likes warm, humid nights, and so it calls later in the spring and into the early summer. It's a short, staccato, energetic boot that's unlike any other call other than perhaps some woodpeckers. Small gray tree frogs can be very confusing in that they are a solid emerald green color. So they live in trees, but like most frog species, have to come down out of those trees and breed in pools and ponds, usually that have emergent trees and shrubs. They're far more abundant in the lowlands at low elevations as opposed to the really high elevations. It's another one of the species that can actually freeze and then thaw out in the spring. So conservation concerns would be maintaining large trees, trees with knot holes that these species can uh, at least spend the summer in and perhaps even overwinter in because we're still learning where these species overwinter. Uh, or shagbark hickory that has loose bark and so where the species can get up under that bark. So they need trees, mature trees, and they need to be able to come down out of these trees again and move freely to a breeding site and then back again.